Hey guys, what's up? Daniel here with DarkGadgets.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AT&T Motorola X. The Moto X is Motorola's first device under Google supervision. The device sports a 4.7 inch 720p AMOLED display, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 4G LTE, and a Motorola X8 mobile computing system which includes a software optimized dual core Snapdragon S4 Pro a quad-core Adreno 320 GPU, a natural language processor, and a contextual computing processor. The phone has a carefully designed curved back that allows it to fit comfortably in the palm of your hand. The phone certainly isn't the biggest around, so it's still usable in just one hand. On the right of the device, we have the volume rocker and sleep and wake button. On the left, we have the nano SIM card slot. Up top, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and at the bottom, there's the micro USB port. On the front, we have the earpiece ambient sensors and a 2 megapixel camera capable of recording 1080p. Then on the back, there's an AT&T logo, a Motorola logo, a speaker grill, LED flash, and a 10 megapixel camera, which is also capable of recording 1080p video. The device runs Android 2.2 Jelly Bean, and even though it doesn't have the best specs in the market, it ran everything perfectly without a stutter. Games like FIFA 14 and Real Racing 3 had no lag, and simple things like web browsing and switching from app to app were snappy. Android on this device is for the most part pure. Motorola tweaks some things here or there, but there's nothing too major. One of the big things here is the Moto X comes with some unique features that use the contextual and language processors so the device doesn't use up too much battery life. First, we have Active Display, where portions of the display light up to show you the time or notification. Active Display turns itself off when it's in your pocket or face down and will only turn back on if it's face up or out of your pocket. When you get a notification, you get a little icon of the app instead of the unlock icon, and you can drag up to launch the app to see or respond to the notification or just swipe down to unlock the phone. Next we have touchless control which learns your voice through a three-step process and then enables the phone to always be listening for the command OK Google now. Once you say the command you can call someone, set reminders, ask questions, send emails, get directions and a lot more which can come in handy if you have your hands full. It's definitely a cool feature but I found myself rarely ever using it. The phone also has this cool feature that allows you to twist your wrist twice to launch the camera app to take a picture quickly but it's actually not very fast. It was faster to wake my iPhone and drag up and then click to take a picture than it was to twist my wrist twice to take a picture. It's a really cool feature but it doesn't launch fast enough to capture the moment instantaneously. It's just cool to launch the camera app like that. The Moto X also comes with some extra little features like assist which knows when you're doing a certain action to help you. So if you're driving, it will read text, play your music, and tell you who's calling. There's also Motorola Connect, which lets you reply to text and see who's calling right from your computer. Motorola Migrate to transfer data from your old Android to your new one wirelessly. And then there's Motorola Skip, a small clip that allows you to unlock your phone with a tap. It also comes with some stickers that you can place in places like your car or desk. The camera on the Moto X is 10 megapixels and has auto HDR, panorama, photo burst, and 4x digital zoom. The camera itself is lacking features, it doesn't let you manually focus part of the picture before taking it. The app either focuses where it thinks it should or where you tap to take a picture. As far as picture quality goes, it was either a hit or miss. Sometimes the colors were accurate and looked sharp, but other times it was completely off. Video was really good and then the slow motion capabilities were pretty sweet. Here are some sample videos and photos that I took. The device has a 2200 mAh battery, which in my opinion is the most attractive feature of the phone. 
The battery lasted me more than a day without using any battery saving options and having Glass connected through Bluetooth while tethering data through the My Glass app. Whenever I didn't use Google Glass, it lasted me about 24 hours, which is pretty awesome compared to most phones nowadays. One of the cool things of this device is that it's customizable. Motorola has a service called MotoMaker from which you can make the device your own by choosing the back color, front color, and accents. You can also change the storage capacity, power on greeting, and wallpaper. You also have the ability to add headphones from Soul Republic that are also also customized to match your Moto X. All of these phones are assembled in Fort Worth, Texas, so if you live in the United States, you'll get it in four days time. And if you happen to not like the device, you can always just return it and exchange it for something else. The Motorola X is definitely a phone worth considering, especially if you're looking for a smartphone with great battery life or you just want to spice up your life with color. The device is available for $200 on a two-year contract or unsubsidized for $579.99. Thank you for watching this video and AT&T for letting us borrow the device to review. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.